Hey guys, so I am really excited for this video because over Christmas I managed to get my hands on the A7R Mark II and a housing to go with it. So this vlog is going to concentrate on my initial thoughts on the housing and not the camera. I wasn't lucky enough to get a housing from SBL or Liquid Eye purely because it would have been way out of my budget. But I was lucky enough to come across a brand called Mecom. Now they sell cheaper housings, they are based in Hong Kong and they make them out of plastic rather than out of metal. Mekon say on their website that their housings are designed for diving and not for surfing so I was a little bit sceptical about buying one. I did a lot of research into them before I bought them and they had really good reviews on the internet. I then went on Instagram and found some surf photographers that were using Mekon housings. Uh, I sent them a private message and all of them replied saying they were really pleased with their housings and that they hadn't let them down. So I thought for its price tag, I want to give it a go. This housing cost me £255 and compared to the SBL and Liquid Eye housings that could set you back over £2,000, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. The housing is up to 40 metres waterproof, minus 10 freeze proof and 1 metre shock proof. It is actually designed for an A7 Mark II, not the A7R Mark II. So I emailed Mekon and I said, why don't you have a specifically designed casing for the A7R Mark II? And they said, because the two camera models are so similar uh, that they haven't actually made a housing specifically for the A7R Mark II yet. But they said that I will have access to most of the controls uh, still using this housing, so I thought I'd give it a go. Mekon's customer service was brilliant. Uh, they emailed back to my questions within 24 hours and the information that they gave was superb. It really put my mind at rest uh, and made me want to buy one of their housings. So what came in the package with this housing? So you got the housing itself with a port cover, which is really good. I've got this aluminium tray. I actually built this earlier. It comes in five separate parts, the two arms, and then this bit splits into three. You've got these nuts and bolts and an Allen key to put it all together. It's really simple to do. You also got this wrist strap and a neck strap. This wrist strap needs to be replaced uh, for something a bit sturdier. Going in any big surf, that's just not going to cut it. So just get a bodyboard leash. So it also comes with a spare O-ring, grease and lens wipe. Lastly, we have the user manual. So all together, it's really great, like full package of stuff. Right, should we get on and see how the camera fits in the housing? So to start off with, it's really simple to open and close the housing. You just have this little lock mechanism here. So if you push that open and then unclip with your fingers like that, it just pops open. So inside you have this sync cord. Now this is actually to connect strobes to. So since I do surf photography and not diving, I probably won't be using this much. So you can just disconnect that so then it's not in the way so much. So it's really great because it also comes with a moisture sensor. So if I just get something dry and try it on the sensor, it's good because I can't hear anything. <laughs> but if I wet my finger, just put that on the sensor, there's this little beeping sound. You also get a, a red light that flashes inside um, to let you know that water has come in the housing. Not a good, not a great, not what you want. So I'll just dry, just dry that off. So let's put this camera in then. So I'd like to mention that there's only two lenses that are specifically for this port in this housing. So you can either use the 24 to 70 mil Sony FE lens or the 28 to 70 mil Sony FE lens. So I have the 28 to 70 mil. Slot this in then. So just check that all the camera controls are lining up with the corresponding housing controls. Once you think you've got that right, just tuck this little thing in so it doesn't get in the way. It also comes with this little silicone package to absorb any moisture. 
So just tuck that in, the housing too. You want to check that the O-ring is free from any dirt, sand or hair, because if you've got anything trapped in there, it will cause leaks. So looks all good. It's really easy to close up. Just simply clip that onto that bit and push it down. So there's one thing that I would mention is you need to set your camera to LCD viewing only because you can't see through the viewfinder when shooting. So now I'm gonna run through all the controls to check that they're working and see how responsive they are. Let's whack off the port. So moment of truth, switching it on. Boom, has it come on? Yes, it's come on, so that works fine. So first thing I'm gonna try is the shutter. Seems to work okay. So what I really like is the fact you can half press down the shutter to focus and then take the photo. It actually seems to work pretty well. I don't have any issues with that. So the customer, custom one and two, just check that they work. Yep, no problems. Then you've got this dial here for shutter speed and you twist that one. So when you twist, yep, seems pretty good to me. So then we've got custom three and that seemed fine. And then you also use the shutter dial to twist and that goes up and down the menu. And then you use this one to select. Nice. So we've got menu, menu seems fine. We've got function, yep, all working. Display on and off. Running through the different displays, that seems fine. So the drive mode, and you can also select through menus by using this dial here. So what I figured out with this dial is you have to give it a little bit of pressure and then twist. It's a bit fiddly. I don't know whether it was designed like this, but you have to slightly press and then twist. And then you'll see it start scrolling through the menu. I would just use the shutter dial because that one seems to work a lot better. If you twist it, but don't put any pressure on it, just to, this camera, so if you twist it like this, don't put any pressure on, it won't scroll up and down. Whereas if you put a tiny bit of pressure and then scroll, you can see that it goes up and down. But I would just use the shutter instead of using that one. ISO and scroll up and down through. That seems to work fine. Select with that button. Then we got the review, so you can look through your photos and then you can scroll through your photos with this dial, the shutter dial, and it all seems to work great actually. You can delete a photo, delete, scroll up to delete, okay. It seems to work really well actually, so we'll come out of review, just check that record works, hit record, and there we go, it's recording. Very nice. So, all the buttons, all the controls seem to work really well. You also have access to your exposure compensation dial. The only dials you cannot use now, there is none for aperture, which is slightly frustrating, but to be honest, I just set my aperture before I go in and I can change shutter and ISO whilst I'm out there. So that doesn't really bother me. You also can't get to your mode style. This is because it's designed slightly differently to the A7 Mark II. Um, it doesn't bother me to be honest though. I shoot in manual, so I'll just set the mode to manual, do all my settings and then go in, or set it to whatever mode you want and then go in and shoot. I don't think that it caused much problem at all. After testing all the buttons out, 
I don't have any issues with them at the moment. I think they all perform really well. So getting the camera out of the housing is again, a very simple thing to do. You just push this red one up here and pull that back and it just unclips and releases. So I'll just put this back on to protect it to do this. So you lift that out, take the camera out like so, and you're done. So I'm really happy with that so far. There's a couple of other things I'd like to show you. And that is this aluminium tray. So I paid a little bit extra to get the, this tray with this housing. There was different packages that you can get, but for 255 pounds, all the stuff I showed you, I got in the package. So this is really great because you can take it in the water and it gives you really stable filming. And the thread that is on the bottom of here is the same as the thread on the bottom of the camera. So as well as being able to obviously put the housing on it like you would normally in the sea, you could also attach your camera to it. Once you've tied it on like that, you can also just use your camera on it outside of the sea and just use it for shooting. And since this has got an ear, like an inbuilt stabilization system, it does give like really smooth motion. So overall, I am super pleased with this housing uh, and I cannot wait to take it in the water and create a little vlog for you guys about that experience and show you how this guy actually performs in the sea. I bought this off the UK Amazon website. Mekon have trusted sellers here in the UK so you don't have to get your products posted all the way from Hong Kong which is brilliant. Just send them a quick email just to check that that seller is trusted by the brand and they reply to me within 24 hours so I'm sure that they will do to you as well. Until I've done a thorough review and taken it in the sea and tested it a few times, I can't tell you for sure how I feel about it but right now I'm feeling really positive and hoping that it does perform well in the sea. I am super psyched to do it so yeah, next vlog will be me in the sea with this little baby. Anyway, thank you for listening and any questions you have, just do them in the comments below. I hope this helped. Okay, bye.